Hey, what's up YouTube? I just wanted to make a quick video talking about how I am fixing my encoders. So, the machine came with these encoders. They're non-differential encoders. Uh, they're optical encoders. And they were giving out a 12 volt signal. So what I had to do was feed the 12 volt signal through this 12 volt to 5 volt optocoupler because my controller takes only 5 volt impulses. Well, that didn't work out because I kept losing steps and the machine would lose itself over a period of time. So I bought some five volt encoders from US Digital. These things are 5,000 pulses per revolution. Um, well, let me open this up here for you so you can see. Yeah, they're 5,000 pulses per revolution. They are differential encoders, which work with my uh, controller. See, there's the optical disc. You obviously can't see the little lines in there, but this is where your index pulse is. Anyway, this little disc goes inside this encoder body and gets read by this guy right here. Uh, get that to focus, yeah. Anyway, um, so what I'm doing is this. I am mounting these, uh, these encoders, so everything will be contained inside this little this little housing right here so I can't I can't just put it straight on here because there's this ridge so what I'm doing it's and it's so simple I cut a chunk of aluminum block and I sanded it down this is half inch aluminum and I'm literally just gluing it to this base right here then I take the encoder uh, the encoder base right here and I slide it onto the block and I use this little tool This little tool right here, this is a centering device. This slides onto the shaft and it slides down inside this little hole here and it centers up my encoder. So I glue all this stuff together um, with super glue. And I know it sounds chintzy, but because you're using this centering device here, it's actually very precise. And then I built the encoder and, um, and I cut a hole in the housing Where's the housing at? Hold on one second. Oh, I'm using the housing to hold the camera. Yeah, this guy. So I cut a hole in this guy and my cable comes out and uh, I have an encoder. Got to hold it down to keep it from, to make sure I have, a, I have a surface that is perpendicular to the direction of the shaft. It's super glue, that, that's set up real quickly. I'm going to clean this shaft a little bit because that, that spacer is not sliding down there perfectly. You scratch it up just a hair. Oh, I didn't tell you guys, but I got my uh, firearms license. I was going to do a whole video about that, but... I've been so busy with trying to get another welding job and and uh, doing some contract work on the side. I build these light stands for a windmill company and um, I built a bunch of those. And I also do contract work for a, um, a trucking company in the area. I do a lot of welding work for them. Here we go, glue it on there. The glue has such strong fumes that it's actually like burning my eyes. You see how that spacer holds it in there? Yeah, the spacer kind of centers it. 
the taper slides down into that hole. That's pretty well set up. It's still a little gooey, but I'm gonna let it dry there before I build the rest of the encoder. So this is kind of what it will look like when it's all when it's all said and done. This is kind of a crazy way of doing this, but you can see it's it's pretty square. Maybe a thousandth or two off. Okay, so we got it all glued on there. Now we're just kind of gonna build the encoder. Basically glue this base down to this block. It looks really ugly because I tried to, to harden the uh, super glue with some um baking soda and it makes a mess it works pretty well but it makes a mess so this is our encoder wheel we don't want to put a fingerprint on it so we're going to grab it from the sides just like this slide it on that shaft and this right here is a spacer it comes in the kit you basically drop it down on the spacer kind of got to tease it into place disgusting And I gotta tease it on there. Get it down past that little ridge. Now I got some great news. While I was uh, while I was doing this, I got an email from a customer of mine um, requesting a very large batch of product that I make, which is fantastic because I love sales. I love it when somebody comes to me and says, I need you to build so many of this particular thing and we're going to pay you this amount. I mean, to me, that's just, that's just the cat's meow, man. I love working in my shop for myself. Okay, so, I don't know how well you can see it, but see how I have that spacer in there? I'm going to pull the spacer out and I've got my my optical disc, you can't see them, but there's literally 5,000 little ticks in the shaded area of that plastic disc. This device is what, where all the happenings occur in the encoder. This is the device that reads it. So this, this slides into the... <laughs> slides right in here like this. So you can get a good picture there. Ah, butterfingers. Leave it to me to drop it. Slides in there just like that. You press it down. Yo, I think it needs to go down just a little bit more. I think our spacer is off. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen that little disc and push it down just a little bit. Okay. I think we need a little bit of a gap between the...
Uh, you know what I should do before I do that? Probably tighten the There's that. Let's see. Then we got these little screws hold the reader down. Okay. So now we pretty much built the encoder and we're just going to put our top on here. Screw this little guy down. Okay, there she is. Encoder fully assembled and mounted. Oh. Now the body of the encoder, this is the body. This slides right over the top. We can really go anywhere, but we need to put a hole in the side of this thing right about, let's see, right about here. So now we're gonna go over to our drill press. We're gonna punch a big ass hole in this body. We're not really being super precise about where this hole goes. We just need a hole to let the connector and cable fit through. <clears throat> Here's our cable here. Here's the connector. Let's see, it goes right through that hole. And into our encoder. It's a 5,000 pulse per revolution encoder, and it is just incredibly badass. Oh, yeah. The corner up here is all jammed up. What's up? The full corner of the shop is jammed up with junk as well. I know, right? So, you know, don't you know? Don't you know? No, a new hole to be right here.
What is? Some of them just started up. And right after you start it up, it's like the transmission is just great. Um, and then as you drive it, it like slips more. And, like it'll engage really well in the beginning, but then as it warms up, as it as you drive it more, it gets worse. Uh huh. Just finishing up the Z axis here. This is my last servo encoder that I'm putting a um, that I'm putting on. And then I will be done. I got the X axis all put together. I got the Y axis put together. Um, so I'm hoping that I can come here in the morning and tune the servos and this thing should be blazing fast and deadly, deadly accurate. Deadly accurate. Yeah, so there she is. Pretty cool looking, huh? I think it's badass. So, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. No, seriously, subscribe.